Hui. What do you say? Hi, hello, shalom, good morning, good evening, good day. <laughs> Today, I am wearing my hat because, as you can see, my hair is very oily, and my beard is slightly untrimmed, and my shirt is very holy because I haven't jumped in the shower yet. <laughs> I haven't gotten cleaned up because this week has been challenging in a lot of ways. After coming back from vacation and being away from the ministry for about 10 days, we went out in the woods and we got as far away from all technology as we could because both my wife and I, we deal with technology on a regular basis. We have cell phones or smartphones, whatever you want to call it, and we work on computers all day, sometimes all night long. And so being digital, sometimes you want to go the opposite extreme and get as far away from everything as you can. So we took our... <laughs> time and went to a, a river that we enjoy and camped out there and basically didn't go anywhere. We got up in the morning and we have our campfire, you know, and we'd sit around and talk and visit, you know, with other campers at times, you know, that we would find. And most of the time we just went hiking and walking, you know, and just spending some good time out in nature, you know, enjoying, really. <laughs> The squirrels, you know, if you can believe that. The creek, you know, the uh, river. Um, gosh, really just vegging out because it was such a relief to not worry about getting up in the morning. Oh, sure, we took our Bible and we had our quiet times, you know, and we spent time with the Lord. But a lot of times when God and I and my wife do that, we just go to wind down. You know, as Jesus pulled away from the crowd some, sometimes and just was out in the desert, you know, I, I enjoy being alone in those moments. But after we came back, it was like, so much had changed. My camera broke. This camera that I'm using right now kind of got fixed, sort of. <laughs> uh, the computer was okay. You know, the house was still the same. You know, we're still here. But the very first day we walked back into the house, our car blew up, and uh, it's, irre it's irreparable, so we had to work on that, and God provided a car, and we're buying it, and <laughs> Lord knows that one way or another it's getting taken care of. But each day that coming back to the ministry has opened up what God wanted to do all along through it, and it's been Him showing us the direction we're going now in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and trusting in the Lord with all our heart, in leaning not in our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct our path. But while I thought, because the one day that when God revealed it, it was like, wow, I was sitting here sharing, you know, and if you check out a couple days ago, or yesterday's video, it was like, Man, it was so, oh, the Lord was there. I mean, here or there or here or there or there. But, well, anyways, you know, God was in the midst of us. And it was like, wow, this was cool. But little did I know that the long-term preparation that has been ongoing of getting things a solid foundation takes time to establish, especially in technology when you're working on the Internet and you establish web pages and networks and we do news services and we do a variety of things like I do in the ministry. But basically like there's probably good sixty blogs more or less and oh Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and you name it, social networking and all the different things to help aggregate to assemble together those quality materials that are good for the body of Christ and to redistribute them outward to other people, as well as to participate in promoting or sharing from my own experiences the things that God has done in my life, as I share with you what Jesus is doing with us, you know, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So, in doing that, today was 
hilarious because, frankly, it was like, man, I was running out of time everywhere I went, and I just kept going, I got to jump in the shower, Lord, Lord, I got to jump in the shower, I got to, Lord, I got to record a video. <laughs> so, it was like, okay, throw on the t-shirt, holy as it is, put on the hat, don't worry that we haven't shaved, you know? Somehow I don't think that those wandering in the wilderness looked like, you know, they were all purified and clean. Sometimes they came in and they were dusty, dirty from the desert. So this day, as we enjoy the things that God has prepared, God has been showing me how he's taking me to the place of extreme preparation for this short burst of the last run before he comes again, which isn't this year and probably won't be next year, but boy, starting in 2013, man, you better be on fire for the Lord with like gangbusters, because <laughs> he's coming soon. In the meantime, there are challenges that come up that, for me, I share them with you to let you know that it's still the same. Cool. It's a challenge. What are we going to do? But also, it does present the requirements of being open and honest before you as I share with, wow, you know, sometimes those challenges make it a little tough to look like, you know, we're professional here. We are professional here, aren't we? <laughs> But if you get yourself so wrapped up in the doing of things, whether you think it's a format, like in church and religion, you're going to fail miserably in doing what God wants you to do each and every day because you are unique and distinctive and different than anybody else in the universe. God meets you today where you're at. He wants you to know that He's with you always. So He's going to shake up your apple cart at times. He's going to knock over your pear cart. He's going to toss your tacos, you know, out on the side of the road sometimes and tell tell you to go out and get a burrito. And if you're really into Mexican food, then he's going to take you to Italy and give you Italian food. Because God doesn't want you to get stuck in a rut. He wants you to learn to incorporate his love for the world. Because God so loved the world that he gave his son. And because of that, hey, check it out, man. you got a lot of people that you need to get to know. Because if you're exclusive to yourself and your own little group, you're missing the boat. You're not walking on water. You're sitting in the boat panicking because the storms of life have come and wiped out your little kingdom that you've got of your job or your wife or your home or your kids or whatever it may be that you've like, oh, God, what happened? And the Lord says, hey, I got it. Don't worry. No problem. So don't be surprised if this week and maybe some days your comfort zone becomes his instruction school for the reality of God in your life. God has not forsaken us. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Uh-oh. We're getting one of those messages again. I don't like it. If you endure chasing, chasing, meetings, I thought I got the belt when I was a kid. God deals with you as with sons. Hmm. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. But, but, but God won't give me anything bigger than I can handle. But, but, but God won't send me a trial that he doesn't give me a way to escape. But, but when things are getting tough, it's got to be the devil doing it because God doesn't chastise me. He doesn't beat me. He doesn't hurt me. He doesn't, like, cut off my branches so that I can bear more fruit. That doesn't hurt a plant. Really? You don't think this plant, when I cut it, cries out? You stick a thermometer 
okay, maybe it's not a thermometer, but you stick a meter on that plant over there, and if I whack this plant, that plant registers something. Call it electrical impulse. <laughs> Call it a coincidence or a coinkadink. But guess what? This plant doesn't like it if I cut it. Neither does that plant because it reacts to it. So, hmm, what it is, we're not going there. But the Bible says, but you, likewise, when God is doing something in your life, is it always the devil? Is it always your flesh? Is it always something else except God first? How do we know the difference? Ask. Jeez. <laughs> Come on now. If you're devotional and your studies in the Word today say, ah, uh, you know, don't forsake the chastening of the Lord, then I think today you're being chastened. <laughs> Gee. Duh. The Lord your God proves you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Your soul has so much emotion, but your heart has so much devotion. So the choice is yours which way you will go. The Lord will not forsake his people for his great namesake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes. They may forget, but I will not forget you. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Always and ever and in any situation, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 ministry is always about trust in the Lord with all your heart. Me not in your own understanding, because you don't know what he's doing. So since you don't know and you can't know, and the only way you're going to find out is if you ask him, you need to go back to square one, which is the first part of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Me not in thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. So to get direction, you got to ask, don't you? To get somehow to the place where he's directing your path, you got to trust him. To get to that place, you can't figure it out for yourself to determine that you're going to go a certain direction because you didn't ask him first, and you have to figure that one out because you got to go to him first in order to get the direction that he wanted for you in the first place. You get it? You got it? I'd say good, but I doubt that you're going to do it. <laughs> None of us do. We go our own way, and then we go, but I don't understand why I can't have that. Daddy, I don't understand why it's not good for me. Daddy, I don't know why she isn't perfect for my life. Daddy, I don't know why I can't just go do my own thing. Daddy, really? <laughs> you can't figure that one out? No. Okay. I think the chastisement's coming. You'll figure it out sooner or later. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. If in this life only we have hope in Jesus, we are of all men most miserable. Now they desire a better country. Now they desire a better country, and this is a... Mwah. When you get tongue-twisted, when you get tongue-tied, don't deny that you got twisted and tongue-tied. Just untie it and... Yeah, work it. <laughs> now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city, a inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away and is reserved in heaven for you. All things are yours, the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. So many people today take this word and they go, 
things so I can claim all things. And in the name of Jesus, I'm going to get all things, and I'm going to hold all things, and I'm going to covet all things, and I'm going to keep all things, and it's going to be my thing. Mine, mine, my gifting, my anointing, my spirit, my prophesying for you. You can have the same things I have if you send me five bucks. Or... If you just donate to the church of your choice, because God is not a liar, and he is not mocked, and God whatsoever soweth will, you know, he's not going to be debtor to any man, so that if you put your money into God, then God's going to pay you back. Tenfold, ten thousandfold. Have I not a thousand cattle? Personally, I tell God, send the cattle, don't send the money. Uh-oh. What if he did? But abusing your relationship is to say I'm not listening to God but I'm taking his word without God speaking directly to you and confirming it to you you see we have precious promises in the Bible and of course we can claim them or we can do like you know the ancient said and have a blank check and write our name on it you know and just kind of go that way if God is impersonal and if you don't really want to get that close to him but Jesus, if we go farther back, said there was something more than that. He came so that we would have a relationship with the Father. Because Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. Jesus, before sunup, long before the sun rose, spent time with his Father. And it says that he saw and did only those things he saw his Father do. He spoke to the Father so that he would do those things that he had been purposed and accomplished to do in his life. If it so be that he had that kind of relationship and he prayed that we would be one with him as he and the Father are one, we are supposed to be developing this personal, like, you know, kind of communication, like this mouth, his ear, his mouth, my ear. Wait a minute. You mean I can't just read it and then believe it and say that that's for me because I believe it and that I bear witness that it's for me. I take that in the name of Jesus. Amen it to me. So be it. That's mine. Mine, 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 mine. No. No. If God honors his word, he's making you a fool and a chipmunky. Okay. My apologies to the chipmunkies. He's making you a fool. Because God will honor his word and make you look like an idiot one day when you stand before Jesus and Jesus says, I got a little tiny problem with you. You know when you were doing all those marvelous works in my name, when you prophesied, when you took the power of God by the Holy Spirit and you raised the dead, and you took the power of God and you prospered, and you took the power of God, you know, and you rolled around on the floor and laughed. When you took the power of God and you used it, did you ask me? Did you know me? Did you even bother to take the time to thank me personally? Or did you just thank me and run off on your own without communicating with me? But Lord, didn't we do all these marvelous works in thy name? Depart from me, I never knew you. Workers of iniquity. Because you see, doing for is not doing with. You can do for lots of things. And it puts you in charge. But when you do it with Jesus, then I think he gets the glory, doesn't he? If you do for Jesus, I think you're stealing somebody's thunder. And I wouldn't want to wait for the lightning to hit. Because it won't happen until you stand before Jesus. You'll get away with it. And you'll think it's okay until that day that Jesus says, depart from me. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which have we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. When you have a partner, someone that 
has offered to do all things for you, to be there, to help you, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to give you all the things that you need in order to manage your life and to move forward in life, and has said that I am your Lord, L-O-R-D, then I think he wants something from us. You mean I don't need to go my own way? You mean I can't just take off and do my own thing? You mean I can't just make it all sound religious and holy and put a THD, a PhD, and a... A what? Son of God? Wait a minute, that, that's... That, 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 no, 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 we don't do personal. We do theological. We don't do personal. We don't want to get too personal now. We don't want to be so personally minded that we're too invasive. We gotta give distance because that's good for you, but that ain't good for me. Because you know what? For me, I don't want to get that close to God. Stay away from me, God. I have issues. And God will. But the reality of what you will be standing before is Jesus. Because God has committed judgment into the Son's hands. We don't go to the great white throne judgment, you know, for condemnation, but my God, what a scary thought to think that the person of our salvation could possibly reject the person that thinks they have it. He accomplished it, so did he say anything else? If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But since he accomplished it, can I just take it and run? Or do I have to be a part of a relationship? There are times in your life where you will hide from the Lord. You will run. You will hide. You will deny Jesus. It happens daily. You can say it doesn't happen to you. You can pretend like you don't do it. But put in a given set of circumstances by God himself chastising you to prove your heart, you will find there are times that you stand and you are lifted up by him. There are times that you will fall when he releases you to your own devices. It's meant to be a learning process, not a chance for you to condemn him who is doing it in you to accomplish his purpose. He loves you, so he will bring you through some fiery trials. He will take you to a place you don't want to go. He will give you something you cannot bear. He will cause things to happen that you feel like may not be the will of God for your life. But because he loves you, but because he will comfort you, but because you have Jesus available to you, if you would just open your eyes, your heart, your ears, and ask him to be more real to you than he has ever been before, then you'll find that in your trials, in the very things that are breaking you right now, you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. You can lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, in everything today, in all you're doing and all you're saying, you can, really, yes, you can acknowledge Him. And I am more than assured by the Holy Spirit in me and by the Spirit of God that tells me and by Jesus Himself who spoke to me and by God my Father who created me. He will direct your path. Isn't that what you need today? Let's go forward with God. Let's walk with Him. Talk with Him. And then if you decide to disobey, be chastised by Him. God bless you.